right, here we are. We're back with another episode of Plant Propagation 101. You can hear the chickens are excited. They're cackling in the background. Now, before we get into it, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and if you're interested in exactly what I do around here, check out the website below and you can get access to six hours of video covering all of the details of this little operation. All right, enough said about all that. Let's get on with the show. All right, so I get this question a lot and I think it needs answering. People come on and they say, Mike, I have this plant that I absolutely need to get cuttings from, but it's not very healthy. It's starting to turn yellow. It's starting to look like it's not going to make it. And I desperately want to save this one plant. Can I take cuttings from it? Well, the answer to that question is, yeah, you can take cuttings from it. But there's another question that comes along after that that goes, will it actually root? And the answer to that is going to be a little bit more convoluted. I don't know is really the answer I've got for you. So when it comes to taking cuttings of your plants, you want beautiful, healthy, lush, green growth like this. You want the plant to be healthy. Here's why. When a plant is unhealthy, every part of that plant is suffering and struggling to keep the thing alive and trying to get back to a healthy state. So that means all the individual cells of that plant are struggling for whatever reason. There's where the problem lies. When a plant is unhealthy, every part of that plant is struggling and suffering and trying to keep that plant alive, which includes every individual cell of that plant. Now where the problem lies is the undifferentiated cells. Because all the cells in the plant are struggling, the undifferentiated cells are struggling too. Now those types of cells are located primarily around the bud sites of the plant. And what those cells can do is turn into any part of the plant that the plant needs to grow and thrive. So they're undifferentiated cells. They haven't differentiated into roots or leaves or stems or fruits. They're ready to turn into whatever the plant needs. Those cells need to be healthy and thriving and ready so that when you take that cutting, stick it in the soil or rooting medium, those cells can then just go to town, turning into roots and growing like crazy to get that cutting off to a good start. When the plant's sick, all those cells are sick. Everything's sick. The plant's just not thriving. When I take cuttings of plants, I'm looking for the healthiest, most robust green growth I can find. And that's obviously in the summertime when you're talking about softwood cuttings or semi-hardwood cuttings. In the wintertime, you're looking for healthy plants that have robust growth. Growth that was robust back in the summer and is now thick and full and you know it's healthy. Even in the winter time, when you're taking those hardwood cuttings, those healthy cells are now dormant, but they were healthy and robust all summer long. So have I ever rooted plants that are less than optimal? Of course I have, I've rooted all kinds of plants, but it's not what I would encourage you to go after, especially people who are just starting out and trying to be successful with this. You really want those plants to be growing and healthy and thriving before you take the cuttings. That new growth that's coming up from the plant, when it's thriving, when it's green, when it's robust, when it's full of moisture and those, those new stalks are just shooting up, they are full of healthy cells and healthy undifferentiated cells and they will just grow like crazy and root like crazy. When you take a cutting from a plant like that, it is just primed to put down roots. When you take a cutting from a diseased plant or a plant that just looks like it's yellowing or it's sick and it's not actively putting on a lot of growth really quickly through the summer, then you've got a cutting now that is in a state that is not really putting on a lot of robust growth. The cells are not as healthy and it's not going to root out as well as you want it to. The other part of the problem is now you've got a plant or a cutting that is not as healthy and not as green, not as viable, and it's trying to put on roots and you really don't want to fertilize it yet. So it's going to take a long time to get that thing to root and it's going to take a while to get it back to a healthy state where it's actually going to turn into a robust plant. So in a way you're kind of fighting yourself right from the very beginning and I don't want to see you guys do that especially when you're new at this and you want to see some successes right off the bat. So this is what I'm talking about. This is that original rose cutting that I did in that original rose video. This is the blue girl rose and it's becoming robust. It's got a nice, healthy, thick stalk. And you can see that the new growth 
through the summer has just been shooting up. It's full of moisture. It's turgid. It's really nice and healthy looking. It just wants to grow like crazy. Had a nice thick full bloom on it that's actually faded back now. But this is what I'm talking about. Nice, beautiful, healthy green leaves full of water and it's just prime and ready to take a cutting. That's the kind of material that you definitely want to be going after. Something that's robust, shooting off with new growth and ready to put down those roots as fast as it's putting up the top growth. Now let's show you a plant that I would not be taking cuttings from. So these are rhododendrons that I've had in here for quite a while. This variety is called Grandiflorum and I actually just repotted these this past spring. They sat in these pots too long. These are a very similar. I propagated these two varieties at the same time. This is Anna Rose Whitney and this is Grandiflorum. I love this purple variety. They sat in the pot too long. I neglected and ignored them. Yes, even I get a little uh, neglectful at times on certain plants because I've just got too much going on. But as you can see, they're starting to look greener. They were kind of a yellow color, the leaves. I'll get down in here. These stems should be a little more green. They're kind of yellowish. You can see down in this one especially, you can see some yellower leaves. Over here, you can see some yellower leaves. This was last year's growth. But when you start looking up higher, I, I repotted these this spring and fertilized, and you can see the new growth starting to come out a little greener and nicer. Now, these cuttings, if I took them, would be super short. On rhododendrons, they send up whirls of leaves every year or whirls of new branches. So this was last year's. This little short cutting here is this year's. So it wouldn't be good for a cutting. The plant is trying to recover and it's trying to get nutrients back up into those, those new branches. The roots are trying to regrow back out. They were root bound. They just were not the healthiest plants. They're gonna recover. I could take cuttings at some point but not this year. I definitely would not go after a plant like this. The growth is not robust enough. Here's an example over here, of something I definitely could take lots of cuttings off of. These plants were up potted last year into big seven gallon pots, or actually I think those are five gallon pots, but they went from, I believe, two gallon pots to five gallon pots. The roots had tons of room to grow. And you can see, I mean, look at that growth. The growth is robust and green and beautiful. And these rhododendron plants here are just healthy and shooting off like crazy. So this growth right here would be prime and just ready for taking cuttings. I could take a hundred cuttings from all these plants. So I know sometimes people get a little desperate because they're moving and they got to get this plant. But in a situation like that, what I would really recommend if it's a viable option would be to dig the plant up, put it in a big pot and take it with you. And then when you get to your new location, plant it, mulch really well, fertilize, and then wait a year or two for that plant to recover and really start thriving. Get a nice root system, put up lots of new green growth. If you can't dig the whole plant up and take it with you, is it a plant that's got multi trunks coming out of the ground? Could you cut one trunk off with a root system attached to it? Is it a plant that has maybe like a rhododendron or a fig where it dropped down and actually hit the soil and new roots formed and you've got a couple branches coming from below? Could you dig one of those up? Do you know you're going to move in a year or two? Could you start fertilizing and mulching now and get that plant in a prime state to start growing like crazy so you can take cuttings? And last but not least, if you absolutely can't do anything about this and you've got to move, take the cuttings off of the sick or not so healthy plant and see what you can do, but no guarantees. And I guess one more last but not least, you can always contact the new owners and see if they'll send you some cuttings. I actually did this. I visited a nursery down in Oregon a few years back. Actually, it was probably 
four or five years ago and they had this beautiful rhododendron that was like 20 feet high. It had probably been there for 50 years. It was an old rhododendron. The variety was called Sir Charles Lemon and you don't see it in nurseries. It's more of a specialty thing and I had to have it. I was at a point where I was just collecting all these old varieties that you just don't see anymore. So I come back home from our vacation and I figured out how to get a hold of this garden and talk to them about their rhododendron and they ended up sending me, I think it was 15 or 20 cuttings. So they didn't ever take rhododendron cuttings there themselves. And they asked me, how do I do it? So I walked them through it. This is how you want to do it. You got to water the night before. You got to take the cuttings the next morning. Here's how you got to take them. Put them in a plastic bag, ship them to me. They shipped me all these cuttings and lo and behold, out of like the 15 or 20 of them, I got three of them to root and I've got them here on my property now. At the time they took the cuttings, it was a healthy rhododendron, but it wasn't mine and it wasn't here on my property and I didn't have easy access to it. I wrote them a letter and they were very kind about it. And a lot of people are like that. Maybe you could talk to the person and be able to get them to help you out in your situation. So for some of you, this little topic is going to be self-explanatory. For some of you, not so much. I see the question a lot. I hope this video helped you out. I hope it helped you understand exactly what you should be taking cuttings from. If it did, you know what to do. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to follow along and see more of these videos. Have a fantastic week, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Adios. All right, now that that's all done, we got to do a little update here. And I thought for this update, we'll take a look at Galena's Roses. If you guys don't remember or haven't seen it, I did a video last year where I took cuttings that a friend of mine from work brought to me and I got them all to root. All three of the cuttings rooted and it's an absolutely beautiful rose. Let's go see how they're doing. So these are Galena's Roses. And if you saw that video, I'll put a link down in the description below. Then you saw we rooted all three of those cuttings that we started. Pretty cool. We've got one that is just really growing robust and you can see how beautiful that bloom is on it. It's a young plant, so the blooms are gonna get better over time. It just lost one of its blooms last night. It was, I came out here and it was big and full on there, but it lost it actually, I think it was this one here. But this cutting keeps sending up all kinds of new buds and it's just a gorgeous rose with a nice fragrance. We've got two smaller ones down here. They're very healthy, very viable, they're very young. You can see new growth trying to shoot off there. I'm just interested in getting roots to grow in these right now this year. And then next year, I'll, or during the winter, I'll prune them back and they'll send up even more nice, thick, healthy growth from down there at the base. But overall, they're doing really well and I can't wait to get some of these planted out on my property. So that's how Galena's Roses are doing. I'll put a link to that video down in the description. If you haven't seen it yet, you can go check that out. And now that is really the end of it. So have a fantastic week, guys. <music>